Amen. Is that your answer tonight? Whatever it is the Lord's asking you to do, that's all we need to say. Yes, Lord, yes. And He'll provide a way. All He's wanting is the vessel. Amen. A willing vessel. Let's everybody grab a hymn and turn to page 438. 438, and as we stand to sing the first and the last verse, Jesus saves, they'll be passing around the offering plate for our senior fund tonight. So let's everybody stand and sing it out on the first verse. Jesus saves. We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land, climb the steeps and cross the waves, onward tis our Lord's command, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, in the wind. Amen. Aren't you glad he does? Let's have a time of fellowship tonight. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being here on this Wednesday night. Thank you so much, and we're glad that uh, you're with us, and um, glad to see that uh, uh, tonight that the rain has come and gone, and it's bringing in that cool fall air. Amen? And uh, we're looking forward to, to uh, cooler weather. I want to give you just a couple of things tonight. One I want to mention to you is that uh, uh, we are having our homecoming service coming up this Sunday. Somebody said a while ago, well, they may be calling for just a little bit of chance of rain. But we're going to have a big tent set up over here. Uh, you can go in the tent or the fellowship hall, and uh, we'll have sides on it if it's raining. We'll have sides on it. If it's not, we'll have uh, the sides open where air can flow through. Uh, we're going to take care of you, amen, and you don't have to worry about that. So you come and make plans to have a great time. Old-fashioned church homecoming, and that's this Sunday. The theme is everybody brings somebody, and we're going to uh, have a great day. And... Um, Encouraging you to wear your old overhauls or new overhauls. I had to go buy me a pair of overhauls just so I'd have some to wear. And uh, my wife got me some. And uh, so uh, she's going to wear her pilgrim dress and bonnet and all that. And I encourage y'all to do it so we're not the only ones that are doing it. Amen. Please do it. Amen. Wear your old clothes. If you don't have old-fashioned clothes, somebody asked me the other day, I said, well, don't worry about it. Bring you, wear your Western attire. If you don't have old-fashioned clothes, wear your Western attire. And uh, we'll have a great day in the Lord, and it's going to be a wonderful time. Remember, we're not having Sunday school. Our regular service is going to start at 10 o'clock, and uh, we're going to start immediately with our choir singing a couple songs, congregational. We're going to turn the witness loose. Then I'm going to preach about 30 minutes. Uh, they'll do one set. I'll preach about 30 minutes. i got a special surprise for you. I'm not going to tell you. There's only a couple people know about it, and I've not even told my wife, but I've uh, got a special surprise for you. I want you to come and, and let the Lord bless you, okay? We're going to preach about 30 minutes, and then we're going to turn the whistlings loose for another set, and uh, we're going to quit probably about 11.30 and go over and eat. Then I want you to bring all your old tractors and antique cars and all your hot rod cars. They don't have to be old cars, but they can be hot rod cars. Antiques of any kind. If you're from Burke County, that would be antiques. And um, says on this announcement here, we're going to have uh, horse-drawn uh, rides and animals. And um, so uh, also bring your camping chairs so you'll have a place to sit outside. Uh, pray for pretty weather. Amen. Pray for good weather. And uh, if not, I guess we'll just have to clear the chairs out of the tent and have the horse and wagon rides inside the tent. Amen. <laughs> Brother Rob, you need to look at the fine print and make sure they don't have anything against that. Okay. Well, we're going to have a good time. Uh, regardless of what the weather is, you come and we'll have a wonderful time, okay? 
and we've ordered extra chicken and all kinds of fixings that goes along with it and banana pudding. Nothing like chicken and banana pudding. Say amen, right? How, who can get excited about chicken and banana pudding? Say amen. Amen. Yes, sir. If you can't get excited about chicken and banana pudding, you're a communist. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, let's see here. And also, don't let me forget this. I don't want to forget this. Uh, Pelicans is going to be here serving slushies for everybody, and uh, I'll probably be first in line for that. Our youth is uh, sponsoring that, so I appreciate our youth doing that. And uh, Pelicans, and if you've never had one of their slushies, you just wait. I'm going to tell you, if you don't like it, you look, come and let me know, and I'll eat it. Amen? <laughs> I'll take yours. And, uh, but uh, it's delicious. It's wonderful. And uh, so we're going to have a great time. I appreciate our youth doing that. And um, you be sure to come. Be sure to invite somebody. I've already invited three people. And uh, I've got somebody planning to come with me. And uh, so if everybody brings somebody, we'll go pack this place out. Amen. But don't worry about the food. We've got plenty of food. And we've got plenty of room. And you're not going to have to worry about being crowded or anything like that. We want you to be comfortable. We want to have a great day, okay? I want to give you some names. We're going to do it old-fashioned style. We've never done this at Wankford since I've been here in about 18 years. Tonight, we're going to do this old-fashioned style, okay? I'm going to give you a few prayer requests. Then I'm going to take prayer requests from you because you may have a special prayer request that uh, someone's sick that we don't know about. Someone's getting ready to have surgery. Somebody's died. Uh, I want to, uh, first of all, let you know that Chad Winkler made it home today. Amen? Amen. Amen. I told Brother Chad, I said, you be sure to come uh, Sunday to the homecoming. We've ordered extra chicken just for him. Amen. <laughs> that boy's gone to eating. I'm telling you, now he can eat. But you continue to pray for Chad. I was glad to hear that they got to come home. Remember Tom Denny and his family. I've done that funeral today for his daughter. And uh, so we ask you to pray for Tom and his family just in the days ahead. Continue to pray for them. Remember Lance Teague and Jennifer. Uh, they set up in the balcony. Lance lost his father unexpectedly the other night. I got a call, and so you pray for Lance. Don't have any arrangements on that, uh, but just pray for Lance uh, Teague and their family as he has lost his father to death. Remember Estelle Hannon, your prayers. I got to see her the other day. She's uh, doing pretty good, but um, she's going down in her health, so just remember her. Remember Brother Marvin Jupiter. He had some surgery today. Uh, in the office, and so be praying for him. Remember Jonathan Young? Jonathan broke his rib the other day, and uh, he's real sore from that. So remember him. Miss Bernie Loman today, I want you to pray for her, and I know they'd call the family in. How, how's she doing, Miss Norma? Okay. This is Norma's sister, so we ask you to pray for uh, that whole family and pray for and uh, pray for Norma and her family. And uh, pray for uh, them as uh, they, like I said, they've called the family in on Bernie. And we ask you to remember them. Who else has a special prayer request tonight? Go ahead, Miss Mary. Oh, I know Regina. Uh, she had surgery the other day. And I, in fact, I stopped out there again and talked to them at the Hickory uh, Hardware out there, Home and Garden. And, and she had surgery. This is Marilyn's sister. And um, pray for her. And uh, they didn't get the results they wanted, I don't think. But she's, she's, is she doing pretty good? Okay. All right. Uh, give me her last name again, Marilyn. Crump. Regina Crump. Okay. Remember her. And uh, you can speak to uh, Marilyn about that, and she can give you details. If y'all hear that roaring noise, that's the wind coming through this, this side over here. So don't be frightened. Don't be scared. Uh, it, you'll be all right. Amen. If the walls come down, run for it. Okay. Just such a, <laughs> I think you're all right. Anybody else have a special request? Go ahead, sister. Oh, my. Oh, my. Are they at a hospital local? Okay. See, see me after service, if you would. All right. I'd like to get that name. These are names that our care ministry team and our deacon ministry team can uh, check on too, and I encourage you to do that. Anybody else? I'll check behind me in just a minute, Brother Dale. Okay. What's the last name? That's your aunt. Okay. 
Anybody else? Okay, let's pray for that. It's a granddaughter. Anybody else? Go ahead in the back back there. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah, see me after service if you would. I'll get some information. Who else raised their hand over here? Sylvia? What was the first name again? Adrena. Adrena, okay. Stomach cancer, okay. All right. Lisa? Okay, let's remember that. Yeah, they come sometimes, so remember them. Who else in front of me here? Up in the balcony? <coughs> Amen, Audrey. Let's remember this. Missing anybody? Let me turn around here. Who in the, in the choir? Anybody else? Joe. Joe Ward. Heart problems. Who else? I have a praise report. My son-in-law has a permanent job since March. He's been unemployed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. That's something to praise the Lord over. Amen. Amen. Pray for Dale and Kathy Little. Dale and Kathy sold everything they had about a year ago, and they're in Romania. I talked to Brother Dale the other day, and he's doing fine, and Kathy's doing fine. They're in there. Dale is 72, and he sold everything he had and was called into the mission field. Amen. Who else? Anybody else? John Mould, the attorney in Morganton. His son passed away. Of course, he passed away a few years ago, um, but he was only 40 in a car wreck. Really? My wife said that everybody that's mentioned somebody tonight, if you'll fill out a care ministry card, you can pick those up in the back back there, a care ministry card, and put those in the God can. If you'll fill that out, then our care ministry team can reach out to these people too, let them know we're praying. We'll send them a card or something like that. Please do that tonight before you leave, and this will be a great way to minister to other people, okay? Anybody else in the choir have a special request? Anybody else out here I missed? I don't want to miss anybody, okay? Anybody in the balcony? All right, let's remember all these, okay, and pray that God would help them. And uh, pray that, uh, uh, let's see, Regina Crump, Barry and Casey Coulter, Aunt Carolyn Deal, Jesse Lohman, um, Reba Hazelwood with uh, health problems, uh, Adrian, Adrian Phillips, stomach cancer, remember Audrey up in the balcony, Chevy Sloan, Joe Ward, Dale and Kathy Little, and then... Uh, the Moyle family, pray for them. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to help us tonight in this service. Do what needs to be done in our hearts and lives. Pray for the message tonight that the Lord would help us and uh, bless in, in, that, in the message time and this choir and the special singing. Okay. All right. So, Father, we'll come in Jesus' name and I want to thank you so much. Lord, every time we mention names like this, I know you hear us and I know that you pay attention. And so tonight, these folks have spoken up and they've been they've been moved they've been touched by these folks that are going through hard times and they've called their names and we're calling them out to you we ask you lord tonight that you'll just touch in their lives and just move in their lives and hearts especially these that have lost their loved ones in tragedy i pray god that you'll just speak to them god they need your help they need your comfort i pray god for uh, lance and his family that's losing his daddy i pray for tom God, losing his daughter. I pray for the Moyle family. 
God, I pray that you'll go to them and just speak that comfort and that peace that only you can. I pray, God, that you'll speak healing to all these others. You're Jehovah Rophi. You can heal. You can touch. Pray for the choir and the special singing tonight, Lord. I pray that you'll have your will and way in everything that goes on here. Prepare us for the days ahead and what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all pray for Brother Tyler. He's going to come and sing one for us tonight.
question again my lawyer would rise up and approach the bench and say good morning father he'd reassure me Amen. Thank you, Tyler, for doing that. I asked him to come up tonight uh, to sing a special for us from youth, and I appreciate him doing that. Okay, thank you so much. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, if you would, and I'm going to share with you with the Lord uh, what the Lord has uh, laid on my heart tonight. And um, I ask you to remember all these folks that have lost loved ones <clears throat> to death in the past weeks, in the past uh, months. It's been uh, quite a few deaths, and um, so I ask you to pray for them, okay? Just continue to remember them. I told that crowd today that um, I preached to at the Hickory Funeral Home that uh, we got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming upon us soon, and uh, these are times and special occasions that uh, it's going to be an empty chair at the table, and that's a hard, that's a hard thing. That's a difficult time, difficult thing. Uh, we were <clears throat> trying to get our house uh, finished in time for Thanksgiving so my mom and my little sister could spend Thanksgiving with us, and we're making everything on one level where they could just drive up and just roll the wheelchairs in. But they don't need the wheelchairs anymore. Amen. We miss them. My mom's birthday was yesterday. Uh, but we miss them. But uh, they're in heaven and they're far better off than they were here. Amen. And it's not going to be long that the Lord's going to call us out of here and we'll all be there together. Amen. And I'm looking forward to it, aren't you? I really am. And I don't think it's going to be long. At all. You say, well, preacher, I've heard that since I was a little nine-year-old boy or girl in Sunday school. Well, you mark her down, friend. It's closer than it's ever been before. Amen. Jesus is coming soon, Amen. and it wouldn't hurt my feelings if he came tonight. Amen. Luke chapter number 10. We'll look at some scripture here and give to you what the Lord has put on my heart. And um, before I do this, I want to uh, read something Brother Roger gave me here about the Samaritan's Purse. It said, the greatest journey our 12-lesson discipleship program offered to millions of 
offered to millions of shoebox recipients each year is raising up a new generation of evangelists. After three lessons of the course, Oleg, 13 from uh, Latvia, began inviting his friends to learn about Jesus along with him. At first, 17 children came and then 24 and eventually 36. Every one of them graduated from the greatest journey and accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Ain't that a blessing? And I say hallelujah. That, friend, uh, is what it's all about. Amen. So we appreciate that. I uh, want you all to be praying. I know that a bunch of you just took shoeboxes Sunday, and there's more out there tonight. But here's the most important thing. Not just taking them, but bringing them back. Amen. Bringing them back. And so I ask you to be faithful in taking them, but I ask you to be uh, more faithful in bringing them back and bringing them back full so that God can bless these uh, recipients, and he'll bless you also for doing that. Luke chapter 10, we're going to start here with verse number 40, okay? But Martha was cumbered about with much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. You know the story here. Jesus had come, and the Bible says in verse number 39, and she, and, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Mary was sitting there at the feet of Jesus. Martha was running around. The Bible says she was, in fact, the Bible says she was cumbered about, which means that she was distracted, and uh, to be distracted or to be overly occupied. Uh, have you ever met anybody like that? And uh, have you ever met anybody that you're trying to talk to, and you're trying to talk to them, and they're just looking around the whole time while you're talking to them? Don't that aggravate you? Amen. And uh, I had a pastor like that one time, and I'd try to talk to him, and he'd be, he'd be looking past me, looking everywhere, and I'd want, I want to look up and say, hey, right here, look right here, amen. Uh, but when somebody talks to me, I try to give them my undivided attention, amen, and we ought to do that. But Martha was cumbered about. She was overly occupied and, and, and overly distracted, uh, and the Bible says, about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care? Now, what, think about that just for a minute. She's asking Jesus. <laughs> She's asking Jesus. Does anybody care more than Jesus? Ain't nobody cares more than Jesus. And here's Martha saying, Do you not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her. Therefore, that she helped me, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. The word careful there means to be anxious. You're anxious, and you're troubled about many things. The word trouble there is the same word we use as disturbed. You're, you're anxious, and you're disturbed. You're careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, watch, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. One thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part. I want you to turn over to the book of John, if you would. The book of John, and we'll look at some scripture here in John chapter 11, verse 20. <clears throat> some of the same scripture, basically. We find out over in this story in John chapter 11, about verse number 20, same girls. The Bible says, And Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. There's something to be said about this. Because the Bible says in verse 21, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. See, here's a different story, but the same characters. We find Mary and Martha. We find out that Lazarus had died, the friend of Jesus. And we find out that Mary is sat still in the house. Now, I'm not going to get into this part of this scripture tonight, but I do want to talk in depth about Luke and our scripture reading there tonight because I think there's a lot to be I think there's a lot to be seen in this in verse number 40. I want you to look here one more time in verse number 42 of Luke chapter 10. And notice one word in there. 
The scripture says, Jesus said, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part. That good part. Well, I was interested when I was studying this, and uh, I began to look up the Greek word for that word part. And that Greek word means it's the same, we, it's the word part where we get our word participation. Participation. And so I began to think about this. And as I began to think about this, I, I began to think to myself what Mary was really doing. Martha was busy and she was anxious and she was disturbed and overly occupied. She was doing a lot of things and the average person would look at Martha and say, she's participating here. But we find out when we read the scriptures that Mary is the one that was really participating. Amen? Amen. She was the one that was really participating. And so the title of my message tonight is a very simple message, a very simple title, a very simple thought, participating in Jesus. I've met people through my life, Brother Jeff, that are very, very busy about a lot of things. And I've even met preachers before that are very, very busy in the things of the ministry. They're having this meeting, they're having that meeting, they're having another meeting, they're having this meeting, they're having this meeting. But you can be busy in the things of ministry, but we need to find ourselves participating in Jesus. And I'm going to get into the depths of this here in just a minute. Because when Jesus says it, it's very important. He said, this one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, or that good participation, which shall not be taken from her. And what Jesus is saying here is, Martha, everything, and you got to know that in the Bible, a lot of times things are stated Maybe the positive is stated and the negative is implied, or the negative is stated and the positive is implied. But when Jesus said this about Mary, he said, this one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen the good part. What he's really saying is, Martha, you've not chosen the good part. <laughs> Amen? Y'all see what I'm saying? The positive is stated, but the negative is implied. He's saying this about Mary, but he's also implying that Martha, because Mary's doing this, you're doing all this, but you're not choosing the good part. You're not choosing the good part. Now watch this. Jesus said she's chosen the good part, the good participation, and this is something that can never be taken away from her. And so tonight I want to talk about a few things that when we participate in Jesus, when we participate in Jesus, there are some things that happen. When you participate in Jesus, there are some things that happens when you do that. And everything that I mentioned tonight, I want you to be able to see it in Mary, okay? I want you to be able to see it in her because my first point is this. When you are participating in Jesus as Mary was, it will quiet, it will quiet or quieten your spirit. How many of y'all from time to time your spirit just gets out of whack? I mean, man, you maybe get stressed. There may be some anxiety just like Martha. I mean, you'd have thought with Martha doing everything that she's doing, you'd have thought that she would have been really tuned into God, tuned into the Lord, tuned in where she needs to be. Man, she is running around, Brother Steve, doing everything. But Mary's the one whose spirit was quietened. See, I see a picture of Martha. Y'all remember Aunt B on Andy Griffith? Oh, oh, let me get this. Let me, oh, oh, be, oh, Andy. You know, she's running around doing everything. She was one of those. But, and that's the way Martha was in this scripture. But Mary found herself at the feet of Jesus with her spirit quietened. Yeah. Nothing was bothering her. Yeah. I mean, she didn't have a care in the world. Amen? I don't know about you, but I enjoy peace. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I love it when the Prince of Peace comes and just sets down right in my life. Amen? I mean, I enjoy it when the Prince of Peace, when everything, all hell could be raging, Brother Roy. I mean, everything just going crazy. But the Prince of Peace, Jesus, just comes and just sets down right where I'm at, friend. I'm going to tell you, when he does that and I find myself at the feet of Jesus, my spirit is quietened. I'm, my spirit isn't screaming out. My spirit. Have you ever been in a situation where you just feel like you just, your spirit's just going to scream out? You just... I mean, when Jesus is on the scene and he's in my presence and he's sat down with me and I'm at his feet and I'm desiring that good participation or that good part, Brother Darrell, 
my spirit begins to be quietened. And I enjoy that peace that comes with a quieted spirit. Amen? I don't know about you, but I, I, I love it when, I mean, when, it, it's undeniable. I mean, when everything's just falling all to pieces and every, everything's around you just falling apart and Jesus, and you find yourself, and all of a sudden it's like you get a breath. It's like, Amen. Uh -huh. Amen? And your spirit is quieted. It don't matter, friend. Anybody could come in the room and say anything they want to, and it's not going to move you. It's not going to change anything. Why? Because Jesus is in the room, and you're at his feet. And I'm going to tell you, when you're at the feet of Jesus, nothing else matters. We know that Mary was at the feet of Jesus, but I don't read where Martha was. Can I show y'all something? There's a lot of difference. If this is Jesus right here, there's a lot of difference in this and this. Jesus, would you do something? Tell her to do something. She's not doing anything. Guess whose spirit is quieted? Mary's spirit. And friend, I want to tell you, hey, do y'all know that life gets busy, amen? Hey, life is busy, friend, amen? I mean, it's, I found myself last night at 12 o'clock on my tractor hauling a roll of hay out to my cows with my headlight posted right there, amen? <laughs> Why, preacher? Because my cows were going, no. I was afraid the neighbors were going to call the police on my cows. <laughs> Life gets busy. Yeah. I was up this morning at 5 o'clock getting ready, getting ready. I mean, ready to charge hell with a water pistol. Like, hey, life gets busy, doesn't it? But we ought not get so busy that we forget to get at the feet of Jesus. Why, preacher? So he can quieten our spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of y'all in here, I know you're... You're about like, you're about like uh, the preacher. Amen? You're wide open. But sometimes we need to put the brakes on. Amen? And find ourselves at the feet of Jesus so we can just kind of settle down. Amen? When you're at the feet of Jesus, when you're desiring the good part, the good participation, and you're participating in Him, not about Him, y'all with me? Say amen if you are. See, we can participate about Him, but we need to participate in Him. We can get busy about the things of Him, and we can be running about, cumbered about, anxious, and just all tore up. Here's a woman who's got total peace, and another woman that, says that her sister is so anxious and so overly occupied that she's missing the main person in the room. Amen? I got something better for you. That Jesus is in us. I mean, He's in us. He's dwelling in us. Let's not run off and leave him. Amen? Let's not run off and leave him. Now watch this. When you participate in Jesus, it doesn't just quiet your spirit, but it renews your strength. It gives you great energy, better energy. Amen? It gives you a supernatural energy. It renews your strength. It quiets your spirit and it renews your strength. I don't know about you, but every now and then I need my strength renewed. Sometimes I have to get along with him and I say, Lord, I just need you to help me. I need you to give me some strength. I need you to renew my strength. I need you to give me some supernatural strength from on high. Amen. And he can do it. Amen. Amen. When, we get, when we participate in Jesus, he quietens our spirit, he renews our strength, but he strengthens our faith too. Here's a woman at the feet of Jesus whose faith is being strengthened every second of every minute, every minute of every hour. Amen. Here's another woman that's running around about the things of Jesus whose faith is dwindling minute by minute, minute by even though he's in the room. Jesus is in the room. And listen, he's here tonight too. Amen. Amen. And wouldn't it be a shame for you to come tonight and Jesus is in the house. Amen. He's here. His presence is here. His power is here. And you leave to tonight disappointed. You leave tonight because you've been about the things of Jesus, but you haven't participated in him. When you participate in Jesus, 
He not only quiets your spirit and renews your strength and strengthens your faith, but he refreshes your emotions. Mary had a greater sense of his presence. Why, preacher? Because she was at his feet. Amen? He refreshes your emotions, your heart, your mind and emotions and will. He refreshes it. He gives you a new, listen, are you like me sometimes? You just, you just need the Lord just to move in and, and, and just refresh your emotions. I've been sometimes before, I've been sometimes before where I say, God, I just, I just want to sense you. I want to, I want to feel your presence. I want, I, want, I want you to do something. So it changes my emotions. I was going down uh, today and uh, going down to the funeral home and getting ready to preach that message to them. And as I was going down the road, uh, I was talking to the Lord and we just having a little chat going down the road. And man, he began to refresh my emotions. I found myself looking for a Kleenex in there to wipe the tears and all that. Why, preacher? Because when you get at the feet of Jesus, he begins to refresh your emotions. Some of y'all need your emotions to refreshed. When's the last time you wept and cried in adoration to him? The Bible teaches that if you study out Mary, you'll find out that she was worshiping him. I mean, she, her emotions had been refreshed. Now, Martha's emotions were refreshed, but it was in the wrong way. Amen. She's almost fussing at Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Did, could y'all hear that in the scriptures? Yeah. She's almost fussing at Jesus because Mary's doing this, and he, she said, Jesus, why don't you say something to her? Bid her, say something to her. <laughs> and then she hears those words about Mary. I want to tell you something. Just because, and they were sisters, they were both believers. And this, Brother Donald, this lets us know that Martha was going to heaven. She's going to heaven, but she's missing the Savior right here. Amen? Can I say there's a lot of church members in here going to heaven, and I know you're saved, and I know you're on your way to heaven, but you miss Jesus every single day of your life because you fail to sit at his feet. Y'all still with me? Say amen if you are. We, we need to find ourselves at the feet of Jesus every day. I got with him this morning. It was early in the morning, about a quarter to five, five 4.45. And I was set, sitting in my recliner, and, and I was uh, going over some scripture, not even what I was talking about tonight, but I was going over some scripture. <coughs> and I started just reminiscing and thinking about how good God has been. I thought about <clears throat> how he has blessed us and how he has just blessed our church and how he's blessed our families and how he's blessed uh, us individually and what he's been doing in our own personal lives. And I began to say, God, I'm so thankful. And I began to say, God, I'm so humble. I'm humbled, Lord, at your presence, that you'd even look our way. And he began to refresh. Listen to me. You can be on your way to heaven, but if you miss sitting at the feet of Jesus every day, you're missing Jesus here. He don't want you to wait to get to heaven to experience him. He wants you to experience him every single day. And here we have Martha in the same room where Jesus is, and she's missing him. Why? Because she's a running around doing everything, participating in all the things about him, but she's not participating in him. Let me just say to you tonight, when we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus, when we find ourselves participating in him, he refreshes our emotions and gives us a greater sense of his presence. But number five, he enlarges our view of God. When we get at the feet of Jesus, we begin to see God and how great He is. He enlarges our view. We see how He is working in our life. Psalm 34 <clears throat> talks about, oh, in verse number 3, Oh, magnify the Lord, O oh, my soul. Amen. How do you magnify? Hey, would you all agree with me that God is great? and there, He's so big the universe can't contain Him. If He is that great, and He is... How do you magnify something that's so big? How do you magnify him when he's bigger than anything you could ever imagine? The way we magnify him is we begin to get at the feet of Jesus. And it, here's the way you magnify God. When the, when the psalmist wrote and said, Oh, magnify him. Oh, magnify the Lord on my soul. Here's how you magnify him. Y'all ready? Say amen if you are. Here's how you magnify him. You begin to be at his feet, at the feet of Jesus. Mary, at the feet of Jesus, she begins to see herself as she really is, and it makes God bigger in her life. There's no way we can make him bigger than he already is, but we can make him bigger in our lives. Amen? When we magnify the Lord, 
we magnify him. We can magnify him by talking about him to other people. And we can magnify him not just in our own lives, but in the lives of other people. I magnified him some this week when I began to tell other people how he can help them, how he's helped me. If he's helped me, he can help you. Oh, magnify the Lord. We in, when we're at the feet of Jesus, when we participate in him, it enlarges our view of God, but also it purifies our heart. It makes you, it makes you face your, yourself and makes you face some problems. It, it purifies your heart, but also it saves you time. <laughs> I've learned this through the years. If I bypass him and he's in the same room and I bypass him, it takes me a lot longer to do everything else I need to do. The reason Martha couldn't accomplish anything is she was bypassing the very one that could help her accomplish it. And I've learned through the years, if I'll stop in the morning and I'll start spending some time with him in my quiet time and I'll just, it, it may be while I'm still laying there in the bed before I get up, it may be after I get up, it, it don't matter. But if you spend some time at the feet of Jesus, your day will go a lot smoother. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I'm going to lose you here. I, can already, I already know it. I'm going to lose you. But how many of you spend more time on Facebook in the mornings than you do at the feet of Jesus? Now, if you'll say amen, I won't even know you're guilty. But if you bow up and get mad at me, I'm going to know you're guilty of sin. Amen? How many of you spend more time on Facebook or some other social site on, on the Internet than you do with Jesus? Can I tell you? You need, to, you need to put Facebook away and spend time at the feet of Jesus. If you spend your morning all on Facebook and talking to everybody and doing everything, talking to everybody except Jesus, you're going to find yourself running around like Martha, and then all of a sudden you're going to find yourself doing what Martha was doing, complaining. Y'all know I'm right. Jesus, don't you care? Yeah. Tell, tell Mary to do something. She's complaining. Why? Because she's busy on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? She's wanting to see what everybody's into today. What did everybody do last night? What are they into today? And first thing she starts doing is complaining to Jesus about Mary. Can I challenge y'all tonight? Tomorrow morning. Hey, y'all believe in fasting and prayer? Y'all believe? It? Jesus said some things only come by prayer and fasting. I believe it'd be good for some of you to fast from Facebook. Ooh, I felt that right there. <laughs> Let's have a 40 day fast from Facebook. I got better response than I thought I would on that. It may hold down some of the complaining. Amen. Men, amen. amen. Women. When we find ourselves participating in Jesus, it saves us time. But it also gives us insight and instruction and wisdom. It gives us insight and instruction and wisdom. I don't know about you, but I need all the wisdom I can get. I pray every day, God, give me wisdom beyond my years. Amen. When we participate in Jesus... It prepares us for a conflict. Participating in Jesus can turn your conflict into comfort. Wouldn't you rather have comfort than conflict? Martha was full of conflict. She was full of conflict. I mean, she was just overwhelmed with conflict. And she was concerned. She was just, she is so wrapped up in the things that she was doing that her life had been, had become a life of conflict. Mary, comfort. Martha, conflict. Comfort, conflict. Which one do you want? It's an easy choice. And when you find yourself participating in Jesus, He will turn that conflict into comfort. But also, when we participate in Him, it anchors us for the storms to come. There are storms on the horizon. We've come through some storms, but there's more storms out there. And when we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus, and we find ourselves participating in Him instead of about Him, Brother Jeff, we can, we, listen, we can, we can weather the storms, we can survive the storms, 
that are out there in the storms to come. But also, when you're, when you're participating in Jesus, it promotes worship in our spirit. And I want to get to this. I want to read it again. But one thing is needful. This is what Jesus said. Y'all believe, he, y'all believe Jesus when he says something? He says, this is, he said, but, th- but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part or that good participation which shall not be taken from her. She was worshiping. She was worshiping. Martha wasn't. Y'all watch. I'm going I'm to say something profound. I just thought of this. She was worshiping. Mary was worshiping. Martha was working. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be worshiping any day than working. I'd rather be worshiping any day than working. We can be about the things of Jesus or we can be about Jesus. Martha was working, 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 working. And I thank God for people that work. I thank God for people that work in the church. I thank God for people that's working in ministry and doing all this thing. But let's not, listen, let's not be confused. Let's not be confused. And let's not be deceived in thinking that our work is worship. You cannot deny the worship. Amen? Because it's going to do all these things I said when we participate in Jesus. It will cause us to worship Him. Martha was busy working, but Mary was busy worshiping. Listen to me tonight. Happiness in Martha's life was not dependent upon circumstances. It was dependent upon Jesus. The joy... I said in Martha, Mary's life, Mary's life. Happiness in Mary's life was dependent on at the feet of Jesus. Joy in Mary's life was not dependent on circumstances. It was dependent on the, at the feet of Jesus. When we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus, we can be happy and we can be joyful and we can be, uh, we can be stress-free and we can be worshiping Him. I'll give you a couple more things and I'm going to let you just go. Participating in Jesus will change our perspective of Him. It will change, the perspective means this. The perspective means a point of view. I mean, participating in Jesus will change our point of view of Him. Watch this. Let's just say this is Jesus again. If I'm at the feet of Jesus, I've got a real good point of view. Amen? I mean, all i got to do is this right here, and I can look into His eyes right here. My point of view, my perspective changes. But if I'm running around like Martha, I never get a good view of him. I never get good eye contact with him. I never can be in that and have a good perspective. I never can have a good perspective of him. Some of you tonight have lost your perspective of Jesus. Why? Because you've just gotten too busy. It may be the things of the world that we're too busy in. But it changes our perspective of Him. But participating in Jesus also changes our perception of Him. Perspective is a point of view, but perception is interpreting what we come to know through being more and being closer and being more aware of Jesus. So it changes our our perception of Him. Martha didn't have a good perception of Jesus because she's running around cumbered about with anxiety. She's anxious. She's full of anxiety. Can I say to you tonight, we need to find out, if you're anxious tonight, get to the feet of Jesus. And your perception and your perspective will change. But it changes our reception of Him. Mary was receiving Him. Martha, I hope that she got to the point to where she did. But wouldn't it be a shame, wouldn't it be a shame to just be so busy that we never get to the point to where we actually receive Him I'm not talking about in salvation. I'm talking about in worship. I'm talking about in that worshiping time. Participating in Him will change our reception of Him, but also change our direction with Him. (laughs) Mary was right where she needed to be. She was right where she was right where she needed to be, and it, it impacted her life. It changed her life. It didn't just change her life, but listen, it impacted Jesus. Mary, because she participating was participating in Jesus. It changes her direction, it changes her reception, but it also changes our promotion of Him. I'll tell you this, when I get to the feet of Jesus and I'm worshiping Him and He's all that I need, He's all I want, I don't have a problem telling everybody about Him. 
I love to promote him. Amen? Because if he's that good for me, I want him to be that good for somebody else. Amen. Changes our promotion of him. And I want to finish by saying this tonight. Who in here needs to find their self at the feet of Jesus? Some of you in here tonight's probably been on your phone. Maybe you're even on Facebook while the preaching's going on. I know it's happened before. You may have been on your phone even while service is going on on Facebook, doing something or whatever. I'm not knocking you. I'm just simply saying, sometimes we need to just shut it all down and focus on getting to the feet of Jesus. Amen? We need to find ourselves where Mary found herself. Don't be like Martha. Don't be like Martha. Be like Mary. Amen? Allow him to quiet your spirit. Allow him to draw you to his self. Allow him to turn your sorrows into stories. Amen? Allow him to turn your encounters into encouragement. Amen? Listen to me tonight. If you've not found yourself at the feet of Jesus for a long time, you need to find yourself there tonight. If it's been a while since you found yourself at his feet in the morning, why don't you get up a little bit earlier tomorrow morning and find yourself at his feet? Talk to him a little bit. Your day will go a lot better. It'll go a lot smoother. It'll be a lot stress, a lot more stress-free. And I'm going to tell you something today. In the world that we're living today, as an- listen, as anxious as everybody is, as, ang- as anxious as, as this world and everybody's, if we, listen, if we as the church of Jesus Christ would find ourselves at the feet of Jesus, he could calm everything. Amen? So I want to encourage you to do that, all right? Y'all promise me you'll do that tomorrow? Amen. Three of you and say amen. I'll take three any day of the week. Amen? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you coming. Um, bring somebody with you Sunday morning. Let's have a great day in the Lord. Amen? I don't want to have to eat all that chicken by myself. It's good, but I don't want to sin and gluttony. Amen? Father, thank you for the truth of your word tonight. I pray that it'll be a help and encouragement to somebody. Thank you for all these people, a good crowd here tonight. I pray that you'll just bless. I pray that you'll help them tonight to find themselves at your feet. Help us tonight that we will not get so busy in this world that we forget to just fall at your feet and worship you and thank you. Spend some time there. Lord, I pray tonight for all these folks that are here. I pray for all those that are watching by way of of the Internet, uh, the live feed. I pray that you'll help them speak to them. And I pray that you'll do great things. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be sure to shake hands with each other. Have a time of fellowship. We've got choir practice on the other side over there.